and uh, in the interest of time we'll now move on to our last uh, talk something which is uh, kind of exciting uh, for cataract surgery uh, dr amit gupta will be speaking about uh, something about intracameral midriasis another step towards uh, dropless cataract surgery dr amit please Uh, is my screen visible yes it is uh, i have no financial interest in this uh, presentation but however this uh, this is an exciting um, it's not a new concept but certainly uh, it has been made much more easier for each one of us and this is the intraoperative uh, midriasis and uh, uh, you know th uh, this is about maybe one and a half two years back and we had a huge ot list maybe 20 cataract surgeries and so this patient had been waiting in the pre operative area all day and by the time i took her up at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon you can see what is happening she has put dilated drops in the morning this pupillary fatigue the pupil has come down we can see it's much less than 5.5 mm which the blue line is signifying and um, this was such a harrowing end to a long surgical day and how can we avoid complications like this and situations like this although we managed this managed to go well and we put in the lens but you can see that this pupil has really come down and it made the cataract surgery so much more difficult now this is uh, another video now this patient doesn't have a small pupil it's simply that this patient we have not put any dilators before surgery and this i am injecting something into the eye and just wait and see that lo and behold we can see that the the pupil is dilating slowly and steadily and this happens over a few seconds and just in a little while we can see that beautiful red glow and then we can proceed with the surgery so the next step is to inject the visco elastic and that makes Uh, the pupil even more stable even more larger and we can carry out the rest of the steps so there the rest of the surgery went as routine so the question arises should we put these intraoperative midriatics or should we uh, let the patients traditionally put the drops before surgery as they were putting is there any advantage to it is there any difference between the two so when we talk about pre operative topical agents so we are all familiar with phenylephrine and tropicamide and cyclopentylate and atropine all these medicines so often there is a delayed onset of midriasis with this and sometimes there is an inconsistent midriasis there may be an intraoperative loss of midriasis there may be a pupillary meiosis which occurs and so many times we see that there is a surface toxicity and dry when we are putting these um, agents along with the systemic absorption and toxicity which is really worrisome in some of the drugs uh, i'll just talk about in a while and what about those older patients and patients who are sometimes living alone and they are not able to put the drops properly or they have tremors in their hands and also the pediatric patients the small children is there a role of the intraoperative dilatation of the pupil rather than putting pre operative drops in a crying child if we see this diagram this is a patient this patient has had a preservative toxicity due to benzencholine chloride we can see so the the source of the toxicity may be the anesthetic agent for example we have to put proparacin in this eyes multiple times to give anesthesia it may be the preservatives it may be the drugs it, uh, itself but it can certainly be hazardous to the uh, epithelium and i don't know if many of our residents and all of us remember at all we used to have such uh, severe systemic side effects especially with the high doses of phenylephrine uh, 10% phenylephrine and it has a, a lot of effect on the blood pressure there are some reports that um, concentrations as low as 2.5% can lead to changes in the blood pressure and can cause bradycardia so this bradycardia along with high blood pressure is is such a bad combination on the ot table 
It has been known to cause pulmonary edema, myocardial infarctions. So this phenylephrine, it's important to remember, it's a sympathomimetic drug and tropicamide is a parasympatholytic drug. So they act in combination and even at low concentrations can cause cardiac problems in patients. So uh, when we look at intracameral injection of these drugs, they, it leads to a very stable midriasis. So it's a safe and effective alternative in these patients. So there are improved you know, intraoperative conditions which occur during the uh, crucial steps of surgery. And there's of course a much lesser risk of systemic exposure because you're not putting the drop again and again. So it goes through the punctum, the drug gets absorbed from the nasal mucosa, all that is avoided. And there's a significantly less uh, perception of pain and sensation of pressure in these drugs um, as has been shown in some of the studies. At the same time, there's a very prompt onset of pupillary dilatation. That's been looking. So the, the, one of the studies which has shown that the average time to maximal pupillary di dilatation once you are giving the intracamel injection of this drug is about 28.6 seconds. And the, when they compared with the, uh, uh, with the control group, they found that a dilatation of 7 millimeters or more was maintained in more patients, as well as the fact that the, once the dilatation was achieved, a loss of dilatation of one millimeter or more uh, occurred in less than uh, you know eleven percent of the patients who had intra intracameral mediatics compared to the uh, control topical group. So it has certain advantages in these patients. Another study, which was published in the BGO in two thousand sixteen, also showed a considerably uh, safer safety profile in these patients compared to the preoperative uh, you know topical uh, anesthetics. Now we see there's a timer on and this patient, so we are injecting the phenocaine and we can just see, so, so it, the, the average time between 25 to 30 seconds is all it takes for the pupil to dilate. So this is uh, how well uh, this drug acts inside the eye. I have used it in many cases and in um, most of the cases it has worked uh, perfectly fine and it's really improved the quality of surgery. So the, the compound that we have used is phenocaine plus. It's the only uh, intracameral uh, dilating drug which is available in India. And this comes in one ml ampules. So one pack has um, five ampules. And I think uh, to the best of my knowledge, it costs around 35, 40 rupees. So it's cheaper than making a patient buy all the other drops including the preservative free lidocaine that we use inside the eye. And uh, this is a combination of tropicamide 0.02%, uh, phenylephrine 0.31% uh, and lidocaine 1%. So this is a preservative free preparation. It's meant for intracameral use. It's approved by the government of India. And I think it's important to understand who are the right candidates for this. I'm, this is not meant for all situations. I came across a very interesting uh, article called the Maximal Midriasis Evaluation in Cataract Surgery. I'm not sure how many of us um, are doing this, but we can check that midriasis as a part of the preoperative surgical planning. So what the, uh, the procedure is that you dilate the patient with the uh, tropicamide 1% um, uh, with 2.5% phenylephrine, assess after 30 minutes. So if the patient is more than 8 millimeters, it's fine. If the patient does not dilate more than 8 millimeters, you repeat with tropicamide and 10% phenylephrine and assess again after 30 minutes. And if the patient still is not dilated more than 8 millimeters, then you would say probably this patient does not have an adequately good uh, uh, pupillary dilatation. So there was a survey which was carried out on cataract surgeons uh, in Europe. And they said, what makes you most, most secure when you're doing a cataract surgery? So this... Uh, 9 out of 10, nine, they gave a 9 score out of 10 point scale. They said that the stable midriasis was something which uh, the surgeons liked the most. It was even more important to them than the largest size of dilatation. So this facilitates 
maneuvers such as cortical cleaning, capsular polishing, capsular excess, IO limb plantation, all the steps. Toric IOLs, it's next to impossible to do toric, toric IOLs in small people because you can't see the marks which are there uh, uh, on the lens. So to conclude, the intraoperative midriasis is not for every cataract surgery, but it has an important place in improving the patient experience of cataract surgery. And intubation cataracts are the situations where we do not want to dilate unnecessarily. So the, we, we have this patient of intubation cataract is taken to the OR, on the table, you dilate. And within 30 seconds, patient is going to dilate. How much safer is it going to be for these kind of patients? It has been shown even to be helpful in intraoperative dilatation. So even intraoperatively, when the patients were received normal dilators preoperatively and they had a pupillary meiosis uh, uh, intraoperatively, so this drug works well even in some of those situations. And so many times we have patients preoperatively, we put a drop of tropicamide and phenylephrine and the eye goes red. Patient says that, listen, um, I, I cannot, you cannot put any dilators in my eye. This is extremely useful drug when we have to operate on those kind of patients as well. There are several other indications. We do not know its safety in endothelial disorders. We don't really, um, I don't think there are many publications on that or in patients of glaucoma or uh, patients undergoing retinal surgery, what happens to the blood vessels. But I think it's a very, very positive uh, move uh, towards increasing the safety and the quality of surgery uh, in routine cataract surgery patients, at least. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Amit. That was an excellent presentation. And uh, I think uh, you cleared just with your talk a lot of doubts the um, people uh, may have had. I was just wondering, uh, can you stop sharing? Yes, could you stop sharing your screen, please? Yes. So I was just wondering uh, as to have you ever seen how long does the effect remain in the sense that sometimes uh, sometimes we're doing patients under topical and seeing them after a few hours? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, um, I was going, there are not many publications, but I did go through the product monograph uh, when I started using this. So this effect is, uh, they say it lasts more than the preoperative midriasis. If you are preoperatively dilating the patient, and it lasts for approximately more than maybe one and a half hours. It has been, uh, we know that there are some patients who are persistent dilators because of some kind of receptors which they have on the iris. So we are not talking about those patients, but in routine patients, it lasts for more than one and a half hours. Thank you. And uh, uh, Professor Jain, your experience with using this, sir? Yeah, I have been using this for maybe more than two years now. Uh, since uh, it was, I brought, uh, they were kind enough to give me good enough samples uh, almost two years ago and keep on uh, replenishing it on a constant basis. So one of the big advantages is uh, patient doesn't have to buy the drops and uh, don't have to wait outside and keep on putting the drops as Amit has already highlighted. And it sort of increases the workflow of the patients, you know, because uh, sometimes uh, a patient, many times it has happened that uh, even the sometimes uh, resident forgot to dilate the proper eye. So I have always uh, this. Uh, Sinocane handy with me. It's always there in my contingency box. <laughs> so yes, I have, I've seen that. <laughs> <laughs> always. Sting, sir. The, the preoperative drops also sting a lot. When you put uh, tropiocamide and phenyl, it stings on the and, eye. Uh, I have used in many, many ICL patients also. Last week also I did one ICL. So we, we use this. So it makes so simple because... Uh, Sort of it avoids putting topical drops, uh, which are in addition to so many other drops which you use preoperatively, antibiotic and all those. So it makes things much more convenient and uh, and a lidocaine also uh, in addition to topical anesthesia, it further helps in preventing the intraoperative pain due to stretching of the zone use of the 
on the ciliary body stretch because that is what it causes the pain. So routinely, I don't use any intracranial lidocaine, but as such, it contains. So it further makes the surgery a little more comfortable for the patient. Uh, I routinely okay. one has become commercially available, which they say it will soon. Uh, they have already launched it, so uh, I will like to use it in 100% of. I believe it's commercially available. It's going to be commercially available now.